Every year, in an epic journey of 500 miles, people from all over the world travel El Camino de Santiago. Be it for religious, cultural, or athletic reasons, or for sheer adventure, each journey is unique and deeply personal. El Camino de Santiago, or the Way of St. James, is a network of routes across Spain and Europe which all lead to Santiago de Compostela in northwestern Spain. In the Middle Ages, these routes were walked as a pilgrimage to the tomb of the Apostle James. This short film is about Daniel Howitt's journey. Well, the history of the pilgrimage, according to legend, is the Apostle St. James, after he was beheaded by Herod in Jerusalem, his followers brought his body back to Galicia, the northwestern part of Spain, and he was buried there. And then 900 years later, a group of monks found his bones, built a cathedral, and the Pope declared that this is a pilgrimage route to go to the bones, the crypt, of St. James. Uh, Santiago is St. James in Spanish, and Camino ah. de Santiago is the way to St. James. It's one thing to be excited about an adventure, but when I actually committed, I realized I was going, and it has been a pilgrimage of the heart. Because people do come from all over the world to hike the Santiago, the Camino de Santiago. There was not really a spiritual aspect to it because the cynic in me goes, God is God. He does not just exist on this path. He exists in our life. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that there was any form of carbon left in whatever bones might have been buried in Galicia for these monks to dig up and go, hey, we found the bones of St. James. This is a second honeymoon between me and God. Many people on the Camino are there at a transition phase of life, and I am not in transition. But it will be a step-by-step -step journey with God and His people, and how do I interact? I do have a guidebook. I'll be making notes of what are the good albergues, and albergue is a pilgrim hostel. Also, what are the good, um, I don't know what the word is in Spanish, in French it's pension, in German it's Gasthaus small places to stay that are not communal. I'm not going with any preconceived notions because I want to be open to anything. Vaya con Dios. And whenever I introduce myself over there, I introduce myself as Daniel, not Dan, because Daniel translates into many more languages. It was the most impactful event of the last 16 years, 15, 15 years of my life, and I have to say 15 because 16 years ago, Susan and I got married. It was not one individual event that went, wow, it was a thousand little events that all added up to this amazing, thought-provoking, mind-blowing, perspective-expanding experience. Random acts of kindness among people of all nations. I, I literally met somebody from every continent except for Antarctica, and I met somebody who had visited Antarctica. Kindness and friendliness and basic respect is not dependent upon you know, the conjugation of a verb in a different language. I flew into Madrid and took a, landed in Madrid about 8.30 on a Sunday morning, took a metro from the Madrid airport to the one of two train stations in Madrid. About a two and a half hour train ride from Madrid to Lyon, Spain. I. It was not the bullet train, but even on the non-bullet train, we reached speeds of 250 kilometers per hour that evening. Yeah, about 
5.30 or so. I found the hostel, got one of the last beds in the hostel. Uh, went for a walk in the town. It was a Sunday evening, it was beautiful. Had dinner with some pilgrims from Germany, Canada, and France. Uh, it was a great meal. The hostel that I stayed at in Lyon was run by a group of Benedictine nuns. And they basically did everything. The meal, you know, either the nuns or mostly volunteers. We didn't meet a lot of nuns. But it was just a really neat, special experience. It was my introduction. I was exhausted. I'd been awake for about 36 hours straight in various forms of travel. Um, but it was special and it was the start of the Camino for me. I'd read a lot. I'd seen a lot of videos, watched the movie The Way. But I consciously, before I went, worked very hard to not have any expectations because I wanted to be open for whatever was going to be my experience. I can say that the movie The Way is actually very accurate. I met people like every single person along the way, including a lady who had her husband's ashes and was depositing them at different beautiful places where she had traveled. But on day two, I woke up early, met a couple of hikers who I had dinner with the night before. It was about 6 a.m. We decided to go ahead and start. And I got to the albergue of the hostel where I was thinking about stopping for that night. And it was only noon. When you're hiking on the Camino, it's a lot of gravel country roads. It's a lot of very, you know, these roads have been hiked for 1,200 years. And by the end of that day, my feet were torn up. I had a couple of slow days where I backed down the pace that I was going at. Um, I met a couple people along the way, a Canadian named Chad, uh, an Hungarian guy named Belege. On that particular day where things were falling apart with my feet, there was, I, I came up out of this one valley and there was a guy with a stand and he had fruit and water and stuff like that. And that was very common along the Camino, where the locals would set up a stand and for donations, donativos, you could buy fruit or whatever. I'm like, oh wow, this is, okay. I, I'm tired, I'm frustrated, I'm angry at myself, I'm sore, but hey, I'll get some bananas and I'll make it. And as I went up to the guy's stand, and there were about a half dozen pilgrims there, the guy who actually runs the stand, his name was David, he, you know, kind of a hippie looking guy. I go to pull out my euros, he goes, no, no, your money's no good here. He says, this is your house. And it was just his gift to pilgrims. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to be touched in such a way at such a moment was one of the thousand little moments along the Camino. There's that mental battle that goes on inside of your head. You know, is it worth it? And I think that's an honest battle. Typically, we would get to the albergues around two or three in the afternoon, take a shower, you know, get settled, you know, get your, your bunk laid out. And then you would go out and just into the courtyard and just meet people. Coming out of Lyon, you're at the end of what's called the Mesita. It's kind of like the Spanish Plains, where it's high, it's flat, it's straight, it's somewhat boring. But there's this one stretch where I could see like three or four kilometers ahead and three or four kilometers behind, and I could see to the horizons on both sides. There was a mountain range to the north, and there was nobody. And I went, this is cool. I mean, I was expecting to go through towns. Um, a lot of small villages that I walked through, which I just thought were beautiful. The only three cities of any size that I hiked through was Leon, where I started, Astorga, and Astorga itself is an old Roman city that was beautiful in its own right, and Santiago itself. Santiago was the biggest city that, that I spent time in. 